bronze Elvis overlooking Beale Street. Just a stone's throw away from ringside. Friday night fights in Memphis. The Mid-South City has the three Bs, barbecue, Beale Street, and blues. And in recent years, there's also been boxing. Tonight, a potential future world champion will show off his stuff. From the FedEx Forum, we start off with undefeated prospect Lamont Peterson. He takes on the always active Leo Moreno. Leo Moreno got a late start, didn't turn pro until he was 27. He's now 31. He came in at 5'8", 138 and a quarter. His last five fights, he was a perfect 12 0 until he fought top prospect Mike Arnautis. That was back in December. He got caught and dropped prior to that. It was a run of overmatched opponents in Minnesota. Lamont Peterson, he's now 22 years old. He's the older brother of the undefeated Anthony Peterson. 5'9", 139 and a quarter, a perfect 15 0 with seven knockouts. His last five fights, all of them were in the Mid-South area. He was born and raised in Washington, D.C., still lives there, but he's promoted very well here in Memphis. He dominated fights on our air against Torres and Frankel, that's Rob Frankel, and that was when we saw him last. Back on the Labor Day weekend, he breezed past a tough and determined opponent, Rob Frankel, won a clean shutout on the scorecards. In fact, he's won 62 of the last 66 judge rounds he's fought in, and he expects more of the same tonight. He likes to wear his opponents down uh, physically, but I'm going to try to wear him down mentally, uh, just make him believe that he can't hit me, make him believe that he can't beat me, and once I get him to believe that, I'm going to take over the fight. So Lamont Peterson, former national amateur champion, came up short of making the Olympic team. You probably remember the stories we featured last summer about the childhood that he was able to overcome, homeless at age 10. But trainer Barry Hunter was his savior. Boxing was the answer. Real likable young man and a very talented, well-rounded, undefeated prospect. Last three decisions he had, we told you that amazing stats that equates to 66 judged rounds, and he's won 62 of them. He has been near perfect. DC USA Junior Welterweight title. We went to the rules in the back. I demand a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times, and gentlemen, you must obey my commands. Jose, do you have any questions? Lamont, do you have any questions? Gentlemen, your trunks are fine. I expect punches, body punches to be above the belt line at all times. Gentlemen, good luck, God bless, touch gloves. A very direct referee is Bill Clancy. This is scheduled for 10 rounds. The ring experience, even though there is a nine-year gap in age, Peterson has been just as active. In fact, he's had 15 fights in 17 months as a pro, Teddy. Uh, he's been incredibly active. This is his 16th fight, and as you said, in less than a year and a half since turning pro. That's the way to do it. Get in the ring as often as possible, get calmer, get more confidence, get more experience, especially when you're fighting lighter opposition. And to be honest, he has fought some light opposition. Probably not in with a great test tonight. Marino taking the fight on 10 days notice. Most of his fights have been in Minnesota. Not much of a commission there. And he's coming off a knockout loss, a devastating one-round knockout loss in his last fight. Joe, very difficult spot for Marino to get that out of his mind with a hot prospect with talent like Peterson. Moreno in the black trunk. You saw the impressive numbers there as he comes pressing forward. And Peterson looks to pick his shots. But those impressive numbers, as you said, Teddy, against competition in Minnesota, there currently isn't a commission in Minnesota. In fact, we were there one time, and it was completely unregulated and chaos in a commissionless state. Interestingly enough, I received a phone call from our colleague Scott Ledoux and good friend who of course was a world-class heavyweight from Minnesota who said Joe I got some good news and Scott is an elected official now in Minnesota he said I have two representatives state representatives on each side of the political parties who have told me we will push for a bill we have to have a boxing commission in this state again and Scott feels assured that that can happen within the year well that's very needed there 
And getting to this fight again, Marino coming off his first loss and a devastating knockout loss. Very difficult to get your mind right, to know that you're okay coming into the fight, to know that everything's gonna be the way it used to be. Usually you want a tune-up, you want an easy go to get your feet back under you. Not the case with Peterson as his opponent. You can see Marino, no nonsense, walk-in game guy, leaves some gaps, comes in the front door all the time. Look for Peterson to do that, to nail him on the way in. The quicker hands of Peterson, maybe the better technique, maybe the truer, concise punches to try to get there before Marino gets there. Moreno throwing 120 punches in the first two minutes of this first round. That's typical of him. He said to us yesterday, if Peterson exchanges with me, it's going to be a lot easier. If he dances in boxing, I'm going to have to find another way to go out there and get him. But he likes to press forward, likes to throw lots of punches and see what sticks. Right hand coming in. You can tell Peterson trying to line something up. Puts a combination together and finishes it off with a left hook, does Lamont Peterson. Again, the openings are there to catch Marino because Marino makes himself available. Good for our audience because he's TV friendly. Maybe bad for him because he's eating a lot of leather now with the quicker hand, Peterson. Good crowd here at the FedEx Forum. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you. Friday night fights in Memphis. Lamont Peterson in action, 15-0, prospect at 140 pounds. Says he wants to be a contender by the end of this year, 2006. Teddy, where does he fit in with some of the other notable junior welterweight prospects as we take a look at that list? Yeah, I think he fits in pretty good. First of all, he's got a good amateur background, so he has the experience, and of course, he has a good technical foundation. He fits in there. Guys, like Malinaji, they fought a little bit better opposition in the pro so far. Oscar Diaz fought better opposition so far. Dimitri Hopkins, a good amateur. Again, a guy that's fought maybe better opposition. Rock Allen just getting started. Kendall Hall, he has fought better opposition. So Peterson is only a little bit behind because he hasn't fought the kind of caliber of guys that these other guys have. He's got to do that in the future. He will do that soon, but the potential is there. Technically solid, and he has that good amateur background. It's so interesting when you look down at that list. Those are just some of the prospects at 140 pounds. And time and time again, everybody says, hey, it's the deepest division in boxing. You can see why. Round number two between Moreno and Peterson. Peterson in the silver trunks, the prize prospect from Washington, D.C., promoted here in Memphis and has fought many times in this area. Places a left hand there. That left hook's been available to him so far tonight against Moreno. Moreno threw 165 punches in that first round. Well, Moreno forces you to hit him because if you don't hit him, he's going to over, he's going to overwhelm you. He's going to swarm you. He's going to just come forward and he's going to start to take control just with the amount of punches that he distributes in the ring. You have to hit him just to keep him in his place. Peterson can do it outside, and he can do it on the inside. Right now, doing it in close quarters, hoping to sneak his shorter punches in between maybe the longer punches of Marino. There's a short left hand to the body on the inside, then tries to dig to the uppercut, and goes underneath with a left hand, does Peterson. Moreno, just the same, right uppercut of his own, pressing all night long and throwing punches in bunches. He's 31 years old is Leo Moreno. Not a lot he has to, to find out where he is, Teddy, and uh, who better to find out who you're, where you are in your career than facing a top prospect? You'll uh, get those answers pretty quick. You got to give it to him as far as having the attitude and mentality Moreno that is as a fighter. Coming off a devastating his first loss and a knockout loss. Oh, what a left Stepping hook in with this kind of opponent with no filler fight, no confidence builder. Just to let him know, Matley, he's okay. Combination from Peterson. It was capped by a right hand. Well, the hand speed of Peterson and just a little finer, shorter technique of Peterson is allowing his hands to get there a little truer. And again, you don't have to look for Marino. 
He's right there coming forward the same way and the same pace all the time. Leo Moreno has absorbed a couple solid shots here in this second round. He's still working, but the more effective shots landed by Lamont Peterson, the 22-year-old undefeated junior welterweight prospect from D.C. Well, Peterson trying to sneak the shots inside. He's putting those earmuffs on. He's trying to punch in between. He's trying to block and shoot, block and shoot, punch in between the little wider shots of Moreno. Every once in a while, he shows you that dimension where Peterson steps out and tries to lay a trap. Good finish here. Action from the end of the last round, you can see Peterson trying to get in that little cubby hole where he's safe and then explode his hands, his quicker hands, in between the little wider shots of Marino. A game, game, Marino. A game and gutsy Leo Moreno from St. Paul, Minnesota. He threw 165 punches in the first round, 140 in the second. Absorbed some punishment from the sharp shooting and accurate Lamont Peterson, but he has come to show his stuff tonight as Leo Moreno. Big underdog, but a big heart. There's a digging left hand underneath from Peterson and goes with the combination and finish it with a left hook. Another left hook from Lamont Peterson. We talked about the kind of amateur career Peterson had. Five-time national champion. 168 bouts. That is why he is so comfortable in that ring. Even after only 15 pro fights. Spent a lot of time talking about that this week, about the mental game, about being in control, being relaxed, and you can see it as every fight in his career goes on, the growth and development of Lamont Peterson. 15-0. Made the comment to our production staff yesterday that not only does he want to be a contender by the end of the year, but he wants the boxing public to truly believe that he could beat Ricky Hatton, the undisputed world champion, who's our studio guest tonight. Be very interesting to hear what Ricky Hatton has to say about Lamont Peterson. I just want to make sure that Brian Kenny is keeping his elbows in there with <laughs> Ricky Hatton. It's been a while since he's had a guest that goes to the body the way Ricky does. Brian, keep those elbows in. Great to have the world champion with us tonight. Ricky Hatton in studio with Brian Kenny. Coming to the final minute here of this third round between Moreno and Peterson. And again, you could see the fight plan of Peterson inside or outside. Right now on the outside, because he's got a better shot. Gives him an option that Moreno does not have. Moreno's only option is to come in the front door and set up inside in the trenches. Peterson with his quick hands, he can go outside and try to lay traps like he's doing right now. Try to get some space for Moreno to leave an opening like that right there. Little space. And then there can be a little bit of room for a mistake by Marino. And that's where Peterson's looking to capitalize. You can see the confidence in Peterson now. Dancing on the outside, picking his spots, whipping that left hand underneath, put a four-punch combination together moments ago. And you can see Peterson, like a lot of kids that have been in the gym a long time since they were young, has no problem switching from lefty to righty. Every once in a while, he'll switch from the orthodox righty position over to the southpaw stance. Coming to the end of round number three on Friday Night Fights. The undefeated prospect, Lamont Peterson, dominating third round he had against Leo Moreno. Now round number four, scheduled for ten. Here in Memphis, Tennessee, his home away from home for the native of Washington, D.C. You know, I like the way Peterson's thinking on his feet right now because he can fight inside or outside, but he figures on the inside and maybe his corner, his good corner with Barry Hunter, has told him, when you fight inside, that's the only shot Marino has. You might beat him on the inside because you're quicker, but that's given Marino the only place that he has any chance at all. Take it outside, and Marino really doesn't have much of a shot. Sharp right hand on the inside. You see free zip. Peterson on top on Teddy Atlas' scorecard. Let's find out what the undisputed junior welterweight champion of the world thinks of Lamont Peterson. We're now joined by Ricky Hatton, our guest studio analyst. Ricky, your first impressions of Lamont Peterson. What do you make of him? I think he looks a very good prospect. Yeah, he, uh, he's got all the punches. You know, he's, uh, he's sitting down and digging well to the body. Double left hooking, which... Uh, Digging to the body for a tall guy is very difficult. He does that impressive. And um, 
uh, Marino's the perfect opponent for him at this stage because even though he's not really in the fight, he's making him learn. He's making him learn, you know. So, uh, but Marino's throwing that many punches, he's leaving the the gaps um, for Peterson, and he's uh, he's the perfect opponent, you know, to uh, for this stage of his career. He's uh, he's looking very good. Love the way he double left hooks to the body and and up to the head. He's uh, which is very difficult to dig to the body for a tall guy, but yeah, very impressed. Ricky Teddy here, great to have you with us. You know, Marino's already shown he's a game guy, he's got a pretty good chin. If you were in the corner, if you were in the place right now of Peterson, would you concentrate? I know that's your forte, but would you concentrate on the body once you see a guy's got a good chin? Uh, yeah, I would do, and um, 10 rounds is a long time, so I don't think uh, he needs to throw maybe as many combination punches as he's doing. You know, Marino's leaving the opening, so uh, pick some good heavy single uh, combination in, just to, especially to the, to the mid section to try and slow uh, Marino down but Marino's taking them well at this uh, at the minute but uh, whether he can continue to do so remains to be seen 10 rounds is a long time but I think you're absolutely right yeah dig to the body you know and uh, once he tends to slow a little bit and a little bit less move and a little bit less punches start coming his way he can uh, maybe put the finishing touches to the job then just as solid of a analyst as he is a fighter Ricky Hatton with us all night long thanks Ricky thank you Coming to the final 20 seconds here of round number four. Moreno still coming right into that kitchen. And there's a left hand to the body from Peterson. Yeah, when a guy is showing you that, hey, I got a pretty good set of whiskers. Well, then you want to... Oh, good right hand right there. All right, then go downstairs and see if he takes it downstairs as well. A closer look at Peterson when we come back. The end of the last round, you see a good right hand as Marino walks right in. You see another angle of it, same punch, good right hand. But here's the key: only one shot. Now you want to see Peterson, and I'm sure his corner Barry Hunter wants to see combinations, not that one shot. Round number five: Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you, getting a strong look at a guy who many say will someday fight for a world title. Up four zip on Teddy Atlas's scorecard is. 22 year old Lamont Peterson wearing these silver trunks against the very game Leo Moreno the punches in round number four and Moreno you know he's got the big numbers all the time in terms of that thrown category through 100 punches but his numbers have been coming down always a low percentage in terms of how many have landed he opened up at 165 in the first 140 punches thrown in the second then 106 and down to 100 in that last round but when you're eating punches your appetite for giving punches starts to diminish Marino has been eating punches round after round from Peterson. Give him credit, coming off his first loss and a knockout loss at that and a devastating knockout loss. He has been game and willing all night, but a little too available for the quicker hand Peterson. And Peterson, who has other dimensions, able to go inside and outside. And do it every which way. Right now, I think the key, as you saw from that replay in the last round, the key is combination punching for Peterson. He's found that he can hit Marino with good, clean shots. Like the old-timers would say, why hit a guy with one if you can hit him two or three? That probably needs to be put into the ears, and I'm sure it will be, of Peterson. You can see the offensive opportunity now for Marino is to catch Peterson when he goes back. Sometimes he'll go back with his hands down on a straight line. That's where Marino is looking to hit a little pay dirt to step with him and catch him when he's in that vulnerable position. Comes in there. Instead, he receives a right hand from Peterson. And he missed trying to catch Peterson on the way out because Peterson was clever. He went out to the side. Side door better than the front door. Does it again there, going off to the right after stinging with one shot to the body. I'm sure Barry Hunt is going to, even though it's been a pretty good performance for Peterson, afterwards he's going to tell him, next time you go out, you go out with your hands down. Oh, your hands up, not down. Just in case you catch something on the way out, you want that glove there. Putting on a little bit of a show here in the last 30 seconds of the fifth round. Dancing around, throwing underneath shots and getting out side to side. Using a dimension that Marino does not possess. Legs, speed, agility on the outside. Halfway through this. 
that has been asked time and time again of the man in silver here 22 year old Lamont Peterson the hot prospect from Washington D.C. in total control here in round number six against a very tough Leo Moreno Moreno in that fifth round the first round in which he was under the century mark he threw 94 punches only landed 16 of them clean shutout on Teddy Atlas's scorecard in favor of Lamont Peterson Again, Peterson has found out early on that he can catch Marino with clean shots. Now he's got to show he can catch him with clean combinations. Marino has been able to survive the one good clean shot at a time. If I was Peterson, I'd be saying to myself, let's find out now if he can survive the good clean three and four shots. Leo Moreno has never been past five rounds in his career. They're the punchers for round five. Moreno throwing 605, but only landing 20%. The more effective work landed by Lamont Peterson. Peterson's defense is to use his legs, to block, to time. Moreno's defense is offense. Come forward and make your opponent defensive and smother him whenever you can these are the spots where peterson will learn on the inside just with a game opponent step back give himself room as he's doing right now step back and give yourself room to create offense and that space created three consecutive left hands and a left hand comes in from moreno moreno trying he's to get in forward to yeah in close where he wants to be where he can work where his only chance exists he has no shot on the outside with the quicker, more fluid Peterson, but on the inside, he figures he can use his physicality, do this, work, go to the body. This is where Peterson must create room and turn it in his favor by stepping back. Lamont Peterson, the older brother of Anthony Peterson, who's also a very well-regarded undefeated prospect at 135 pounds. Anthony now joins us ringside. Anthony, I know it's always tough for you to be sitting ringside watching your brother fight. So much goes on in your head, but give us a sense of what's going on in your head tonight with what you see. Um, he's looking real good. Um, I would like to see him use his jab just a little bit more. Um, and a guy with clean shots. You can see the, the kid is real tough. 12-1 um, with 10 knockouts. Um, but um, he's never been past five, as you said, and I um, like to see Lamont go to the body more as the rounds go longer. Coming to the end of this sixth round, Peterson, 15-0, well on his way to win number 16, a very good-looking prospect. Promoted and does most of his fighting here in Memphis, Tennessee. Joe and Teddy joined by his younger brother, Anthony. Are you his biggest critic? Yeah. No doubt, I am, you know what I'm saying? Um, whenever he make mistakes, I'll be right on him, you know what I'm saying? Especially when we spar in the gym, you know what I'm saying? If he um, if he drop his hands, I'm gonna be right there to, um, to touch him. And I ain't gonna touch him soft, I'm gonna touch him hard too. I know you were disappointed you were scheduled to fight tonight, but your opponent came down with an injury, so that was postponed. But tell this guy sitting to your right what the me best memory of your career so far has been, something that came out of his mouth last July. Oh, man, when he told me, man, um, that I had it all, you know what I'm saying, the whole package, man, I was so happy, man. I watched the tape at least 100 times. Teddy, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know what I'm saying? That was the greatest compliment I ever had in my life. Oh, thank you for being the kind of people you are, not just in the ring, but outside the ring. Right. And continue that and continue forward. And pick up the check for dinner tonight. Because, <laughs> well, actually, make sure your brother picks up the check for dinner tonight because he got paid, you didn't. Yeah, it's cool. He, he going to pick the check up. <laughs> Round number seven, Moreno still in there against the undefeated Lamont Peterson. We're ringside with Anthony Peterson, 14-0. Nine of Anthony's last 10 fights have ended by knockout. You were sensational on Tuesday night fights last July against Carlos Valdez. That's the fight in which Teddy was so complimentary of your work. So what's coming up? What's 2006 have in store for Anthony Peterson? Um, great things. We're expecting great things from Anthony Peterson. Um, I want everybody to tune in uh, April 28th on the show um, time I'm supposed to fight. Um, but um, we, we're expecting great things. Um, I feel good. My camp's strong. I'm strong. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we just trying to pull this victory out of Lamar tonight so Lamar can um, get his title, WBC. <laughs> Anthony, always good to visit with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Moreno gets slapped away with a left hand there. <laughs> Back to the one two for Peterson. He puts the left hook at the end of it. I agree with Brother Anthony that the only thing you could ask for more from Lamont Peterson right now is to use the jab more on the outside to keep range, to keep distance from Marino, because Marino, of course, wants to be close. That's his only shot. And then the only other oh. thing, put the punches together. With that left hook, put a right hand. A big left hand there. But right now, I think if Peterson puts the right hand with that left hook, he may have Marino visiting the campus. He's catching with the left hook. He just Look needs to this. put them together nice and sharp. Good exchange on the inside. Peterson in control. Moreno, such a tough, tough veteran. Again, the opportunity for Moreno is when he forces Peterson out of the pocket. Sometimes he'll go out straight with the hands down. That's where Moreno can follow him and catch him. And you see right there, that's in the mind of Moreno to try to force Peterson, the more talented fighter, out where he's in limbo a little bit and where he can catch him stepping back in a straight line. You know, Teddy, in just looking at Leo Moreno and some of the shots that he is absorbing tonight, this is a guy that suffered a first round knockout last time out, but yet he has shown a chin here in this fight. Right there, one of the reasons why Peterson's left hook wasn't as effective as he may have wanted. Just watch, he's cupping with it a little bit. A little bit of a slap with it, not turning it over to the square, the meaty part of the hand. And he's not getting full power on that left hook. Just take a look when he throws it. Little cup there, not turning it over. That one he turned over. Good action. Ended the last round, just good old-fashioned fighting and quicker hands by Peterson. Such an entertaining seventh round. 235 combined punches between Moreno and the undefeated prospect Lamont Peterson. Round number eight. Who would have thunk it that Leo Moreno would still be hanging around? He's never been passed by, and he's coming off of a first-round knockout. Teddy's scorecard, 69-64. Again, the offensive windows of opportunities for Moreno, and he needs those opportunities because he is well behind, at least on my scorecard, in this fight. Those opportunities are to try to catch Peterson, flush him out, and catch him like that, which he just missed, on the way out, maybe with his hands down. The other opportunity is to get inside the old-fashioned way and just work in close in the trenches. Exchange left hands there. Moreno trying to track him down. Peterson working the legs. That left hand jab snapped his head back for a moment, but he's still moving around to the outside. Watch your head. Buddy. Billy Watch your goes head. forward there, does Leo Moreno. You know, I'll tell you right now, the thing that impresses me with Peterson and the thing that why amateur experience and there, once again, you see the single good shot. If it's the right hand that starts it, you see one right hand. If it's the left hook that starts it, you see one left hook. But what you want to see is the combinations two or three good solid shots and then maybe Peterson maybe he gets his eighth knockout with a real game opponent but the thing I like about Peterson that really strikes me and there he goes straight back and that's the opportunity that Marino's looking for is to catch him on the way out but what I like about Peterson and that's where the amateur background 168 pounds Joe serves him so well and he gets caught with a right hand on the inside there Marino never slowing down never giving up what I like is he can handle the pressure if he didn't have that amateur background, he might start working mentally just from this kind of game dogged opponent. But he's handling it because of all that amateur background, all that confidence he's accumulated. Yeah, this is a very mature 22-year-old prospect. Only 15 and 0, but 168 amateur fights, all the national amateur titles he was in against the best. And he's a very disciplined young man, as is his brother Anthony. They eat, sleep, drink boxing seven days a week.
And I tell you, even though he's a much more physically talented fighter, he's being tested. He's being molded tonight just because of the mental end of Marino pushing him and making him ask questions. Out earlier about the difference of turning the left hook over and cuffing with the left hook. When you turn it over, bang, you turn it all the way over and you get the meaty part of the hand, you get all the power behind it from the shoulder to the punch. But when you cuff, like this, and you don't turn it all the way over. You do not get the full power on the punch. Cuff, turn it over. If he starts turning it over and puts a right hand with it, maybe, just maybe, Peterson will get a knockout. Well, he has six minutes to try to do just that. Lamont Peterson against a very tough Leo Moreno, the 31-year-old from Minnesota. He said, it's time to find out a lot about myself. Well, we found out that he's tough and at his game and he's been there all night long now exchanging to start off this ninth round standing toe to toe just watch the left hook on the left side it's going to be the left hook that's going to start it on the right side it's going to be the right hand watch the left hook if he turns it over if he turns it over you probably see the knees give a little marino if he comes with it and doesn't turn it over doesn't square it up then marino can handle it better uppercuts on the inside Moreno tries to fire off that right hand uppercut missed both times Again, this is a test people are gonna say well, you know what Moreno was not as talented No, he's not as talented, but he's mature 31 years of maturity. He's tough. He's dogged He's consistent. He's game and he is testing Peterson in that area He's making Peterson ask questions of himself and forcing him to come up with the right answers. A good example, Teddy, of what you say time and time again. Everybody thinks this is purely a physical sport. It's as much a mental sport, if not more. No, you can even the playing field. You can start to make things a little bit more equal, even if you're not born with the genetics, with the gifts, with the physical gifts of a Peterson. You can start to even things out a little bit in other areas. And one of the areas is with determination, with work ethic, with just old-fashioned grit and Marino trying to grab onto those things and even the playing field ESPN's newest toy the real-time live punch track numbers and you can see that Leo Moreno has thrown now over 1,000 punches and we're coming to the one minute mark of this ninth round very impressive numbers tonight great output from both guys it's been a very entertaining fight always fun to get a look at one of the future stars of the sport Lamont Peter and it's always great when somebody comes with this much determined effort as we're seeing from Leo Moreno. Our fans have to be enjoying this because this is just old fashioned. Get inside and go to work. Good, good stuff between these two. The prospect against the determined 31 year old. Good exchange there. Left after right, right after left. Work on the inside now. Peterson willing to exchange. One thing you got to give Marino credit for, two things. One is his game, but the other thing, for the most part, he has gotten the fight to the geography, to the place he wants it, that he has to have it. Not on the outside, on the inside. And give Peterson credit. He's been able to stay inside with a very game mature Marino. What a chin this Leo Marino has. Peterson just blasted him with two shots. Look at this. The FedEx Forum, the crowd on their feet here. And why not? It has been a sensational go between Leo Moreno and Lamont Peterson. And look at how they start the 10th round. The undefeated prospect against a huge underdog from Minnesota. Look at these shots. I have a funny feeling that the brother of Peterson, Anthony Peterson, just went in that corner and told him, put them together instead of one clean hard shot, make it two or three he had been sitting here all night long on the headsets just listening into our call the fight he turned to me after the ninth round ended and said joe i gotta go get in his head and you oh, see it right hands that that's probably what he put into his head or into his ears if you can hit him with a left hook you can put a right hand left hook behind it if you can hit him with a right hand you can put a left hook and right hand behind that 
Just the start to an action-packed Friday night fight still to come. We will have Delvin Rodriguez against Alexis Divizone. Rodriguez has been spectacular the last three times he's been on our air. Plus, Ricky Hatton, the undisputed world champion in the studio tonight. Heck of a night on Friday night fights from Memphis, Tennessee. Look at Marino just press forward on the inside and places a right hand against the undefeated prospect. And look at Peterson, what he's doing different than what he did at the end of the oh. last couple of rounds. Instead of just quick arm punches, he's trying to sit down and make them all telling punches. Oh, a looping right hand from underneath. He whipped it up. Semi bolo. Bit Short like right hand. Trying to bring back Echo's memories of Kid Gavilan. No doubt about it. With that bolo punch. The inventor of it. Some people would argue and say Seferino Garcia, the middleweight champion, invented it, but no doubt that Gavilan made it popular. Made it popular. Good body work here from Peterson. You were looking for that early on, and then that left hand, and a right hand follows it up. Final minute. Little shoe shine by Peterson. The quick flurry punches downstairs to set up a big one upstairs. Again, for the most part, Marino, give him a lot of credit. He got the fight where he needed it, inside where he could take some of the speed away, some of the footwork away from Peterson. But Peterson, give him credit, even on the inside, he's been able to get it done a little better. The thing I'm looking at, as far as grading a grade, on the report card, there's the one shot, not the two shot from Peterson that I've been calling for. But as far as the grade on the report card, the best thing you like about Peterson is the way he handled the pressure all night long of the game, Marino. And they take it right down to the final second, throwing nonstop. What a fun fight to open up Friday Night Fights. The unbeaten prospect. Boy, he brought it. But could Leo Moreno take it or what? We will come back and hear from the judges on Friday Night Fights. Well, before we got State New York winter, the 23-1 prospect will be taking on Rochester, New York's Russell Jordan on Friday Night Fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color. Your boxing authority. The punch track brought to you by Just For Men. Wow, a little busy on the keypads tonight, boys. Look at what Moreno was able to do. 1196 total through 896 headshots, but the percentage, the better clip by the undefeated Lamont Peterson. Teddy Atlas's scorecard looks this way. Lamont Peterson in control, 99 to 91. Teddy, how do you grade him out tonight? Like I said earlier, I give him a good grade, and more importantly, this is a development fight, a fight that's going to improve him because of the pressure that he dealt with tonight. This is going to make him a better fighter. I understand. Don't worry about that. I understand we got to For the uh, judges' official scores, we send it up to J.D. Lyons. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge Gerald Demme scored the bout 100 to 90. Judge Bruce Foster had the bout 99-91. And Judge Joel Dovenbarger scored the bout 100 to 90. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And new WBC USA Junior Welterweight Champion that soup that was just poured over him in the form of that trinket, but you can't disregard Lamont Peterson. He is now 16 and 0. What an effort from Moreno. Who knew he would stay around for 10 tough rounds and put up those punch track stats. Let's send it back to the undisputed champ and Brian Kenny. Gentlemen. All right, Joe, thanks. That's what I said, who knew? When I hear, and knew, and knew, and knew what? What could it possibly be? But more importantly, Lamont Peterson. Ricky, again, you're the champ in his weight class. Your thoughts? Yeah, wonderful uh, fight for him, wonderful learning fight for him. Marino made him work all the way. 
Uh, at a very fast pace, you know, uh, Marino threw a lot of punches, but, you know, uh, Peterson had to work out, out very hard there as well. So, uh, yeah, great fight. And he never got disheartened, even yeah. when Marino was taking the punches. You know, we must have thought, you know, frustration could set in. This fella's not moving, you know, but... Um, yeah, yeah, great, perform great performance, great fight for him. You might be seeing him uh, someday. Good fighter, very good fighter. All right, let's talk about this first, Ricky, before we talk about uh, your career. Another big fight.